Every so often, there's an article that's so cancerous you have to devote an entire video to it. 20 politically incorrect songs that would be wildly controversial today! Here we go again. Here we go again. There's nothing like hearing a song come on the radio or flicker across a Spotify playlist that you haven't encountered in a while and realising, was this song always this offensive? The answer, yes, it probably was. So not content with making virtually everything that's new in the culture sterile, sedated and inoffensive, now you're running decades-old songs through your convoluted, labyrinthian, ideological purity test too. Because it's just not enough to ruin contemporary music, comedy, sports and entertainment by demanding they all adhere to some arbitrary and ever-changing impossible standard of political correctness, now we can't even engage in cultural nostalgia without being made to feel guilty about it by hectoring joyless idiots. Song, do they know it's Christmas by the Band-Aid Choir 1984? Choice lyric, and there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time, the greatest gift they'll get this year is life, where nothing ever grows, no rain or rivers flow, do they know it's Christmas time at all? Why it wouldn't fly today, possibly the most culturally insensitive Christmas song of all time! The Band-Aid supergroup may have raised money to alleviate an Ethiopian famine with the proceeds from Do They Know It's Christmas? But they did it with a song that declares the entire continent of Africa is bereft of water, trees or joy! So they raised millions to alleviate an Ethiopian famine. But that's not good enough because the lyrics of the song make reference to the famine, where nothing ever grows, no rain or rivers flow, is a reference to the drought that caused the famine. You utter frigging clown. They're talking about the famine. I mean, what does it say about the state of our culture that a song which was made to literally help save the lives of starving black people, which launched a movement that raised millions to help mainly poor black people, is now verboten because some middle-class white woman living in New York City says it might offend black people. Complete and total lunacy. Song, Rape Me by Nirvana 1993. Choice lyric, Rape Me, Rape Me My Friend. Why it wouldn't fly today, we get it. Kurt Cobain was a deeply tortured soul. He probably, in retrospect, could have expressed this one better. Kurt Cobain, tortured soul, voice of a generation. Icon. Yeah, but those words he used hurt my feelings 25 years later, so he, he should have done it different. <laughs> Here's the kicker. Kurt Cobain was an ardent feminist. He specifically said in interviews this was an anti-rape song to raise awareness about sexual assault. He said it was a song meant to be so blunt that no one, no one, could misinterpret its meaning. Kurt Cobain obviously didn't anticipate the sheer unrivaled stupidity of USA Today's Maeve McDermott and Patrick Ryan. You know, it's really hard to, to um believe everything you read. Who are both presumably so stupid that they're unable to perform a simple Google search to determine the meaning of lyrics in a song. But forget context, forget intent. He used the word rape 25 years ago and I'm offended. It's just kind of offensive. Song, You Are So Gay by Katy Perry 2007. Choice lyric, I can't believe I fell in love with someone that wears more makeup and you're so gay and you don't even like boys. Why, it wouldn't fly today. If Perry's I Kissed a Girl was borderline gross for its exploitative take on same-sex experimentation, You Are So Gay crosses the line with its deeply immature rattling off of gay stereotypes driven home by the use of the word as a slur. The straight up slur. Right, because we all know that the stereotype of gay men wearing makeup and acting effeminate is just one giant conspiracy invented by homophobic bigots. I've literally never met a gay man in my life that acts like that. Who would even dare to suggest such a thing exists? Bigots, that's who. Song, Turning Japanese by the Vapors 1980. Choice lyric, I'm turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese. Why, it wouldn't fly today. No, turning Japanese isn't literally about turning Japanese. Still, it wouldn't be acceptable today to hear a group of white guys assuming the identity of Asian people. Really? Well, let's ask actual Japanese people if they're comfortable with white people assuming their identity. So I showed random Japanese people Katy Perry's kimono performance and asked them questions. But privileged whitey from New York says you should be offended by it. It's just kind of offensive. Also, this song has literally nothing to do with Japanese identity or culture. Read the lyrics. It's kind of unclear what it's about. It's about angst and youth turning into something you didn't expect to. You know how I know that? Because the guy who wrote the frigging song said it. But again, content, context and intent are completely obliterated because someone, somewhere, 
might be offended. It's just kind of offensive. Song, Illegal Alien by Genesis, 1983. Choice lyric, it's no fun being an illegal alien. Why, it wouldn't fly today? It's message and story are seemingly well-intentioned, detailing a Mexican immigrant's struggle to cross the border in search of a better life. But the racist video puts the song in a whole different light with stereotypical imagery of mariachi horns, ponchos, sombreros, and oversized mustaches. Oh, so it's actually a pro-immigrant song, but because you break out in hives over a few scenes of Phil Collins mocking about in a fake mustache and a sombrero, that makes it bad. Because no no one living in Mexico in the 1980s had big moustaches or wore sombreros, did they? I mean, maybe you'd prefer stereotypical Mexicans to be depicted in a different way. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. It's just kind of offensive. Song, Dude Looks Like a Lady by Aerosmith, 1987. Choice lyric, she had the body of a Venus, Lord, imagine my surprise. Dude looks like a lady. Why it wouldn't fly today? Guy walks into a bar and realises the stripper he's been ogling is actually a man. Although the rock classic was co-written by openly gay songwriter Desmond Child, it's questionable use in the media by Fox News when reporting on Chelsea Manning, for instance, makes us think that it's not the homage to the LGBTQ community that he intended. Well, again, if you'd actually developed the skill that enabled you to perform a simple Google search, you'll notice it had nothing whatsoever to do with an homage to the LGBTQ blah 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 community. It was a twist on a Steven Tyler song originally called Cruising for the Ladies. And Dude Looks Like a Lady comes from them mistaking Vince Neil from Motley Crue for a lady after seeing his luscious blonde hair from behind. And just because Fox News played it as a tongue-in-cheek dig at Chelsea Manning has nothing to do with the original song anyway, you utter spoon. It's just kind of offensive. Song, Ebony and Ivory by Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder 1982. Choice lyric, Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect harmony, side by side on my piano keyboard. Oh lord, why don't we? <laughs> How could anyone be offended by that? Offensive. Why it wouldn't fly today? McCartney and Wonder meant well with their hyper-literal interpretation of race relations, but their message of people are the same, there's good and bad in everyone, so let's just get along, would be interpreted as hilariously naive by the more woke factions of today's cultural discourse. Yeah, how dare Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder invoke the message of Martin Luther King? How dare they encourage others to judge people not on the colour of their skin, but on the content of their character? How dare they encourage racial harmony and everyone living in peace? The woke factions of today's cultural discourse demand hatred and division. They demand segregation because it's just so damn progressive. Song, Tonight's the Night, Gonna Be Alright by Rod Stewart, 1976. Choice lyric, don't say a word, my virgin child, just let your inhibitions run wild. Why it wouldn't fly today? In case the lyrics to this number one hit weren't cringe-inducing enough, try not feeling icky watching its video. In it, Stewart woos a faceless young woman and leads her up to his bedroom before she says in French, I'm a little scared, what is my mother going to say? Then 30-year-old superstar Rod Stewart writes a song about how he likes to bang young women, because we all know that rock stars whether back in the 70s or today, never like to bang young women, do they? I mean, the very thought that anyone could even, could even suggest that just shows how far the patriarchy has warped reality. Oh yeah, and the I'm a little scared, what is my mother going to say bit was spoken by Britt Eklund, who was Stuart's girlfriend at the time. Again, Google search. Simple Google search. It's just kind of offensive. Out of the entire list of songs in this stupid, dumb article, there's probably one where you say, okay, fair enough, that's a bit messed up. Then 14-year-old Alaya singing about her 27-year-old boyfriend, R. Kelly. But apart from that, this entire dumb diatribe is just another exercise in control freaks trying to thwart police art and culture because they're determined to make everything as mind-numbingly barren and boring as possible. Go and watch TJ Kirk's video linked in the description for a vehement debunking of all the other stupid examples they cite. The whole notion of subjecting the past to a hysterical, contemporary, ideological purity test is starting to infect everything. Anyone who said anything years ago that violates today's Byzantine standards of acceptable discourse faces being shunned for movie roles or record deals. Celebrities who've been accused of sexual misconduct are being digitally removed from magazine covers. What's next? Are they going to use deep fake technology to amend politically incorrect lines in old movies? Maybe when all books are digitized, outdated terms and descriptions can just be scrubbed entirely and we can burn the physical copies. <laughs> Maybe we need a new woke PC rating system for movies and music in addition to the age one that serves as a trigger warning. It's just kind of offensive. Maybe we need to strangle authentic artistic creativity with our moralizing bullshit 
that bit more. Because the current castrated, anemic, gelded state of our culture just isn't dull enough already. Or maybe, just maybe, we need to stick a middle finger up at these sanctimonious, pearl-clutching morons and say enough is enough. Stop trying to suck the fun out of absolutely everything. It's just kind of offensive. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.